Today's dedication is for Zahn, who gave me a very generous one year's worth of subscriptions on Patreon. Malcolm versus Wilson with the background agent of the Shadow Thieves. And yeah, we've got lands and a means of potentially protecting the Malcolm, so we will keep. We are on the play, so get down the Rivendell tapped. And it's a hardened scales from our opponent, so after putting plus counters on the Wilson and doing some Voltron stuff, I think. So just go for an island, and we drew into the Force of Will, so we'll be able to counter something. Maybe it'll be worth countering the Wilson. Oh, actually, it can't be countered, so <laughs> glad I didn't go for the Force of Will onto that then. Uh, let's go for our Malcolm Alluring, whatever it's called, Alluring Scoundrel. Both of us with our two mana commanders in play. All right, that is Tetsuko, drawn just in the nick of time, so this thing does have reach. It will be able to block. Not sure our opponent would have blocked, but yeah, we do need to get down the Tetsuko here and we can protect our commander with the Force of Will if we need to. So we will swing in for two points of commander damage and we will get a loot. Uh, okay, that is... Yeah, that's a straight seven cards with the memory. So yeah, I'll get rid of the commit so that we can cast the memory from the bin at some point if we need to refill our hand. All right, so now it's Agent of the Shadow Thieves. I think we'll allow that into play. No, it's risky allowing plus counters and things to go awry, but they'll be able to just replay it next turn anyway. A keen sense we will allow as well. I'm just hoping for a bounce effect at this point, to be honest. That will obviously remove the plus counters. We are going to need to pay, is it Ward 2 on this? Yeah, Ward 2, so a 2 mana bounce effect is what we need, really. But anyway, it swings in. It is now a 4-4. Death Touch, Indestructible, Vigilance, Reach, Trample with Ward 2. And they do draw a card to that keen sense. Alright, we get into another land, so play the island. And go in with the Malcolm again. We're still a few turns away while we're not getting into any kind of proliferate. Okay, there is a Cityscape Leveller. Um, yeah, keeping hold of that might be an idea. So let's get rid of the Seagate Restoration, maybe. Yeah, we'll get rid of that. We've got card draw in the bin. So just holding up the Art Mage's Charm at this point. The Wilson continuing to trigger, so it is now on 6 commander damage it's going to be hitting us with. So we're already up to 10 commander. Drawing a card again takes him up to 7. Not worthy that with the Art Mage's Charm we could steal this away, but I think the damage is already done. Okay, a Demonic Tutor. Um, we'll allow them to tutor, and hopefully it's not something that's uncounterable. So let's go for drawing a couple of cards with Art Mage's Charm here. Okay, and there we see an Unwind and another Island. So still no Proliferate, another Island. Play that. We do get to draw another card though. Need to remember that we've got Scry 2 on this as well. As long as we control either one of our legendary creatures. Now Misty Rainforest being activated, so we may well see a use for Unwind here. Alright, and an Abrupt Decay, yep. Just going up against all the uncounterable stuff, unfortunately. So, going to get us with the Reacher on the Wilson onto our commander and blow this up. So, yeah, double whammy there. Um, probably best just go for the Rivendell then. And uh, look at that, just two islands on top. So, that goes back into the command zone. We're straight back to square one. Uh, the Alrun's Epiphany were best foretelling at this point then, I suppose. Yeah, you don't often see Wilson in the 1v1 room, but I think I made a deck out of it at some point, and it is a very good commander. Doesn't get a lot of love, this one, for some reason. Anyway, that is a Tyvar's Stand. Just gave plus X plus X, which sent it up to a 12-12 and hit us for lethal. So I'm not sure what would that have been, plus 4 plus 4. Anyway, however much it was, our opponent got us for lethal there. Yeah, Wilson, a really good and underappreciated commander. We'll try another one, see if we can actually counter anything. Up against Freya Elise this time, with some counter magic available, we will keep. Don't expect to see too much spot removal from a mono green deck anyway. Especially not at instant speed. Let's say turn one dork in the form of Draga Tree Speaker will likely tap for two mana next turn. We draw into a Mull Drifter. So we see a Crystal Vein tapping for one mana and then leveling up this. And then again we see a Sol Ring. The Painter Servant, likely part of some kind of combo, naming black with that. So our opponent going off, down to two cards in hand before we've even done anything. So play an island, again we're going for Malcolm at the end of the turn. Or maybe we go for Mana Drain onto the Frey Elise. Yeah, should be okay. Alright, so there's a Mind Stone. Mana Drain will get us five mana. 
So we're at four mana, four colourless mana with a mind stone. Then three colourless mana and one blue held up. We're, yeah, I think we're going for Malcolm either way here because we want the um, we want the Rivendell to come in untapped. Get down the mind stone as well. Play Rivendell. And then we can force our opponent to crack the Crystal Vein maybe to go for the Frey Elise. We can go bounce a couple of creatures here and draw a card. Means that we're not holding up counter magic, but like I said, it's green, so we'll just hope that we can deal with anything, especially with River's Rebuke in hand. So bounce both of these things, make them recast them. And drew into a key to the city, so even if they get a reacher in play, we should be able to get it through. So playing the Jiraga Tree Speaker again, leveling it up, and we'll likely see the Painter's Servant. So I've managed to buy ourselves a turn at least. They didn't get down their Frey Elise again. And okay, Kane Island is nice, so play that. And let's go through for our first attack. Okay, Cavern of Souls. I uh, hmm, will be able to afford River's Rebuke next turn with that. Gets us closer to Rift as well. So let's risk. Uh, it's risky getting rid of Key to the City, but we'll do it. And then let's go for a Mull Drifter being evoked into play. So I won't be able to keep it, but we will draw two cards off the ETB. And be able to hold up the counter spell this way. All right, and we've got an omen of the sea if we do not use the counter spell. So, yeah, fine. The Ozolith is good as well, so that we can keep the uh, level counters on here or whatever they are. All right, and Uvermold Hydra with Reach. I don't really fancy dealing with, especially when we just got rid of the uh, key to the city. That's the risk involved. Yeah, okay. It's actually not counter spell dot deck. Uh, I don't think I've got as many counter spells as I should have in a Malcolm deck in 1v1. What you should do with a Malcolm deck if you want to play it decently in 1v1 is run a lot of counter spells and big spells that you can cheat in with it. Uh, I went for more of a proliferate style and um, yeah, if our opponent's annoyed now, he's going to be really annoyed when he sees River's Rebuke. Yeah, I actually just went through the deck list now and uh, well, my opponent's probably writing more stuff. No, is he just timing out because he doesn't want to concede? Yeah, there's 11 counters in the deck as I count it, quite a few of which are situational, um, like the Mystic Confluence, which pulls double duty. We didn't use it as a counter spell there, but that is counter magic. Yeah, I appreciate Mono Blue is a pain in the neck to play against when it gets to counter your stuff, but at the same time, it takes me four turns to get my commander going, so you've got a shot of getting something going if you just have the patience to play it out, but it doesn't seem as though our opponent does, so... It seems as though we're going to have to play another one. Playing against Perforos Bronze Blooded this time. One lander is a mulligan. All right, an interface mana is uh, probably another scoop from our opponent. Um, get rid of the Omen of the Sea. An Ancient Tomb with a Mind Stone means our opponent can get a Perforos down reasonably quickly for himself as well. Another island. So play that out into Mana Crypt. And it'd be fair enough if our opponent scooped to this, but yeah, with a, an empty hand, he can safely assume that we don't have any counter magic to protect our commander at least. Get down the Sapphire Medallion. Might be our opponent has a Vandal Blast as well. Um, so yeah, it's just a one mana Malcolm at the end of our opponent's turn. Pretty predictable play, so could have a means of burn on the commander as well. All right, a strip mine onto ah uh, yield until the end of the turn. That's so annoying, Magic Online. Um, I don't think there's a button in which you can yield until one of your things is targeted. But um, yeah, I was yielded until the end of the turn just for the sake of saving time there. Anyway, our opponent's uh, down a land anyway, so I suppose it just buys us each an extra draw. So there we see a Raven form. Could get rid of the artifact with that, but that puts a flying blocker in the way, which is the downside of it, so... Right, we'll yield through the turn again, and I'm just going to do it manually this time, even if it does rack up the clock. It's funny, I get it in the neck from both sides with viewers. Some will say that you're running up too much time on the clock, and then some will give me grief for yielding through something like a strip mine, so can't really win. Okay, not in a particular rush to get anything down there, so there might be some burn from the Malcolm, some kind of red counter magic, but we'll see. It's not like we can't afford the command attacks. I suppose I should have gone for the Fortel on this as well. Uh, Alright, there's Cathartic Pyre. They're not rummaging with it or looting with it. So three damage onto our commander. We'll take it down. 
And there's an Art Mage's Charm, which we cannot afford, so uh, go for the Raven form being foretold. And they might assume that that's a saw it coming. We do have quite a few foretold cards in the deck, so be able to surprise him with a few things, hopefully. Being able to hold us off our Malcolm for quite a while, though, even with the fast mana, so Perforos comes in. We'll get down our commander as well. Can't afford the counter on the Art Mage's Charm, which I would have done if we hadn't lost an island. So maybe Bounce Counter will be an option. And there we see an island, so play the island. And if our opponent gets a land next turn, he might be able to go for two activations with this and go for some kind of combo. I mean, that'd be a pretty good opening hand if he is able to do that. Alright, so in response to this, we could go for the Steady Progress, but the counter's not on there yet until it resolves, so you know, we'll just have to let it resolve. See what we want to discard. Alright, a Ristic Study. I don't think he's going to be of much use to us. Our opponent's going to be cheating things in, as opposed to casting spells, I would assume. So we'll hold up counter magic, but it might be that we go for draw two cards with the Archmage's Charm. Don't actually have anything to do with Malcolm's ability here. Right, a Nyx though, Shrine to Nyx, doesn't have too much devotion to red available, but like I said, he'll be able to activate the Perforos twice. Are we going to regret not holding up the counter magic? Our opponent will assume we have it, so we'll proliferate and draw here, or try to. I mean, he needs to force us to use our counter magic if we have any. Allows us, we proliferate, we draw... Gets us into an island, draw into a counter spell, so might have to just discard the island. Swing in with our commander again, because drawing with the Archmage's Charm would be ideal, but we won't be able to hold up counter spell. That one strip mine at the beginning of the game is making a lot of difference. Okay, Perforos able to cheat something in, <laughs> and of course he has a flyer, because why wouldn't he? Uh, this is a sorcery, I think, yep, so we can't even get rid of it with that. So down goes our Malcolm. Return it back to the command zone. We will play the island this turn so that we can both go for our Malcolm and draw cards with the Archmage's Charm. And obviously in the meantime we'll hold up counter magic if we need it as well. Mindstone being traded out at the end of the turn. And Endless Sands. Exile a target creature you control. And then you can return them to the battlefield with this. It's going to be pretty slow going though. And what did I say about Vandal Blast? <laughs> Knew my opponent would have it. So we'll go for the counter spell on that. And then try and get down our commander again. Alright, Mystic Confluence is a nice one. We'll be able to counter something and draw a couple maybe. Can bounce something back to their hand once they've cheated it out. So what are the chances that we get into a land this turn with the Archmage's Charm? Yeah, we'll have to try it I think. Because we don't want to go looting things away that we don't want to really. And we're not progressing our coloured mana all that much. Which makes the Archmage's Charm difficult. But we do need to be seeing an island there, and we do get into one, that's excellent. Flux Channeler is good as well. So draw and discard, and that's another island, so we were always going to get one. So now we get to just hold up the Mystic Confluence. Although it might be worth getting down the Flux Channeler next turn into the Mystic Confluence if we don't have to use this. But yeah, Perforos, another good matchup against us, because the activated ability on this does not count as casting, obviously, so we can't counter it. Alright, just straight up hard casting, a Tyrant's Familiar. Uh, don't want to deal with any flyers, so we will have to counter this. Uh, draw two cards and counter. They were hard casting that because they want to leave it in play, as opposed to being forced to sacrifice it with the Perforos. And yeah, that's enough to have our opponent scoop it up, so... Yeah, it's a good matchup with the Perforos, like I said, able to cheat things in, but... You need to keep the Malcolm from swinging in as well. Fortunately for our opponent, we were being quite slow, and he did control us quite nicely there, but apparently we were starting to get out from underneath him. And we were drawing into some non-creature cards there, ready for the Flux Channeler, so... Yeah, we would have been close to getting our commander's limit break off there, for lack of a better term. But while we would have had the right number of counters, we didn't have anything decent to discard and cast for free, so... Didn't go to plan too much this time around, but... I think it's just as important to show you the games that don't go incredibly well instead of just showing you the ones that do all the time. Helps you to better analyse the commanders, I think, because if you decide to build it and then realise all the shortcomings of it that I haven't shown you, then that might be considered a disservice to all of you. Anyway, hopefully you all enjoyed the video, and I will see you all in the next one, I hope. I'm Travel Kai. Thank you for watching.